Hello everyone and welcome to this second video on antiderivatives. In this particular section we're going to discuss antidifferentiation when initial conditions are given. If you recall in the previous video the concept of antidifferentiation was introduced as well as the appropriate notation to accompany this type of operation. Here's an example that we covered where two functions are related through either the anti-differentiation or the differentiation process. When performing the derivative of function big F, the function little f is obtained. This operation is called the derivative. So in other words, little f is the derivative of big F. In the other direction, a, an antiderivative of little f produces big F. One thing you should notice is the incorporation of an arbitrary constant, which still fulfills the criteria of the antiderivative. In terms of notation in Cal 1, the differentiation process was uh, displayed by the use of prime symbols, or of course we could have used Leibniz notation ddx to indicate that a derivative process was taking place. In our situation in Cal 2, we will indicate the anti-differentiation process by using the elongated S symbol. So this is an, an indeterminate or an indefinite integral that acts on function 3x squared plus 6x to produce the most general antiderivative x cubed plus 3x squared plus k. The integration symbol dx is just there to show the user which variable is considered the independent variable in this whole process. So what about the arbitrary constant k? The value of k that is added to antiderivatives of little f of x were generally arbitrary and allowed to generate all possible functions such that f prime was equal to little f of x. However, k may have to be very specific if conditions are imposed on big F. Here's an example of that kind of situation. A company's marginal profit when x units are produced and sold is given by the function mp for marginal profit is equal to 48 minus 2.4x. The question here will be to find a function that describes the actual profit function if the company's break-even point occurs when 10 units are sold. Now, I think it's a wise um, idea to recollect what it means to have a marginal profit. In fact, this is just vocabulary used in business or in economics, where marginal profit is actually the derivative of the profit function. So essentially, what we are given in this example is the derivative of the profit function to be equal to 48 minus 2.4x. And therefore, to find the profit function itself, we have to undo the derivative that had taken place on it. In other words, we're going to find the original profit function by solving the antiderivative of 48 minus 2.4x. In order to find the antiderivative uh, of 48 minus 2.4x, you can use the properties for the anti-differentiation process. So you're allowed to split subtraction of functions and you can also withdraw constant multiples. Here I've done both of those operations in one single step. So I've split out the 48 and the 2.4x functions and extracted them from each of their individual integrals. Now recall that the integral of 1dx is a basic antiderivative that is equal to x, and that the integral or the antiderivative of x is x squared over 2, which is a power rule, also part of our basic list. And therefore, 48x minus 1.2x squared is an antiderivative 
of the original function, 48 minus 2.4x. An additional constant is added to the antiderivative to produce all possible functions whose derivative brings us back to the marginal profit we had. Now, speaking about this uh, constant, is it really arbitrary in the present scenario? Actually, the answer to that question is no, because remember that we're looking for a very specific profit function whose break-even point occurs when 10 units are sold. So given that we have a general idea of the profit function, we can now apply the condition that we wish to impose. Break-even means the profit becomes zero, and that happens when the value of x, the number of units, is 10. So computing all the numbers that are now available, we can find that the appropriate constant to meet both the derivative we know about the function and the initial condition or the condition on the break-even point is that k must be minus 360. So inserting this value into our profit function, we now have its exact expression. Here is a graph of the profit function that we find. And notice how this graph crosses the x-axis when x is 10. It will reach a maximum profit when x is 20. And because costs will then become more important than revenues, the uh, profit will eventually decrease and not be profitable.